blessed be your name. And blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. When I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out. I'm Jeremiah Holst, one of the pastors here at Calvary. But beyond being one of the pastors, I'm also a member of this church, and I contribute regularly through my offering with Rebel Give. One of the things that I really appreciate about our Christian faith is that we are offered the opportunity to not only receive the grace that God gives us, but also to participate in the building of the kingdom. Through our gifts, both of our money, of our time, of our talents, we are able to be a part of what God is doing. And without the gifts that all of you provide in those ways, the work that we do here at Calvary simply could not happen. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your continued blessing of the ministry here. Good morning, friends, and welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday uh, as we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples all those many centuries and millennia ago the whole same spirit is present with us now as we worship wherever we might happen to be. Before we jump into worship, there are a few announcements. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to look at the slides prior to this service uh, to get some more information on a number of things that we're going to be looking at as Calvary. There's also announcement slides following, but just to touch on a few things. Uh, today we are very glad to have Bishop Bill Tesh as our guest preacher. This is also the same weekend as Synod Assembly, and so he's providing a sermon for us as well to celebrate this Pentecost uh, we also are having our second offering ministry as Lutheran Campus Ministry this month, uh, so you're certainly welcome to donate to them as well. The Shed Fundraiser is continuing all the way through Father's Day, so I encourage you to get your tickets to that and help support the ministry here at church. Also, 
This past week has been a flurry of changes uh, for the mandates that have come down from both the CDC and the Minnesota Department of Health. Uh, and so we here at Calvary are making a few changes as well to our in-person worship service. Uh, as of this past Sunday and going forward, for now at least, uh, masks are not required for those of you who are fully vaccinated, though still recommended. Uh, and for those of you who are not vaccinated, we do still ask that you uh, wear your mask in worship. Uh, we are also not pre-registering any longer, and so you can come and join us on Sunday morning at 8.30. We are still dividing out the pews uh, so that we can kind of keep some separation uh, and make collecting offering a bit easier as well. Uh, these changes do not apply to the uh, preschool where full mask mandate is still in effect. As always, this is kind of a moving target as it has been this entire uh, pandemic experience. And so stay tuned and we'll kind of walk through this together as brothers and sisters. We want to do our best to be community, to be the church, to help out as best we can to get through this together. But for now, let us join together in beginning worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first song is Gracious Spirit. Hear our pleading. Let's join together in prayer. Holy One, for all the ways you speak to us, in rushing wind, in dancing flames, in words we understand, and in all that transcends language, we give thanks. Give us courage to speak your love everywhere we go, to everyone we meet. Amen. Song in my soul, and 
broken hearts lead me to your open arms word of truth illuminate all these lies the enemy speaks inside in freedom i will rise because you called me Our gospel today comes from two books of the New Testament. The first section comes from Acts chapters 2, verses 1 through 4, uh, and then we hear from the book of Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. We begin. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And from Galatians, my point is this, heirs, as long as they are minors, are no better than slaves, though they are the owners of all the property, but they remain under guardians and trustees until the date set by the Father. So with us. While we were minors, we were enslaved to the elemental spirits of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, kids. Welcome to Children's Time. Today, we come to the end of the Easter season. Today is called Pentecost. Today we celebrate the birthday of the church. Not this particular church, Calvary Lutheran Church, but the world church. We are celebrating as we have for 2,000 years with people all over the globe for God's church. Today we celebrate that we're not Christians alone. We are Christians together. We are a family of Christians all over the world. Our Bible story today talks about the disciples of Easter. They have seen Jesus risen from the dead, and they watched him go to heaven. They are still struggling with the Easter mystery. And suddenly the disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit. They are overwhelmed with Easter joy. They know that Jesus, though in heaven, is still with them always. Just like we know that Jesus is here with us today, too. Jesus is not just for those little disciples, right? Not just for them. Jesus is with all of us all the time, all over the world. Jesus was with the people then, and he's still with us today. And because of that, we know that Jesus loves all of us. Yesterday, today, and even the people of the future, Jesus loves all of us. And so we celebrate together as a global church for the birthday of the church because we are all blessed people. You know, at my house, when someone has a birthday, we have two parties, one with friends and one with family. But to celebrate the church birthday, we all are family, and we all are friends. We have one big celebration every year 
and it falls today on Pentecost. Will you say a pray with, prayer with me? I'll start, you repeat, okay? Dear Lord, dear Lord, thank you, thank you, for your world church, for your world church. Help us, help us. Say happy birthday, say happy birthday with our family, with our family, all over the world, all over the world. Amen. Amen. Dear siblings in Christ of our Northwestern Minnesota Synod, grace and peace to you from our God who breathed new life into our crucified Lord Jesus by the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's story from the book of Ezekiel brings to mind for me an experience of several years ago. Bear with me, there's a connection here. We were actually hunting in western South Dakota. We were pheasant hunting and we had permission from this farmer to hunt a particular plum thicket on his property. And the farmer said to me, Bill, they're going to be in there. I said, okay, great, thanks. He said, no, you don't understand. They're going to be in there. I said, got it, great. So he shakes his head and he, he takes me by the arm and, and he, he walks me over to the edge of the field and he points to the plum thick. He says, no, they're going to be in there. I said, no, I got it. I understand. Thank you. We're going to go hunt it now. I said, no, you don't understand. So he actually walks me over and we get to the plum thick and it actually drops down into this sort of valley, right? So we're kind of standing up on this hill and he says, now they're going to be in there. I said, great, thank you. He takes me by the arm, he walks me down into the bottom of the plum thicket, and all of a sudden when we hit the bottom, the floor kind of started to rattle, and it just sort of came alive. And pretty soon pheasants just started to jump out of there. Pretty soon there were hundreds of birds in the air. It was, I'd never seen so many birds in one place in my life. They were in there. So I learned from that farmer that sometimes you do, you got to get in there to really understand what's going on. And sometimes you realize you've been in there all along and you didn't even know it. So how does that connect with Ezekiel? Well, I realized in, in dwelling in this word for the last few weeks that I've misheard and misread and misimagined this story from Ezekiel for a very long time. Whenever I would hear it or study it or preach on it in the past, I always imagined Ezekiel on some kind of a hill or a prominence or, or, a, or even a cliff looking down into the valley of dry bones and the Spirit of God next to him talking to him about the, the dry bones. But that's not how it goes. Ezekiel is in the valley of the dry bones. He's down there. And I wondered how is it that I misimagined that? How did I misunderstand that for so many? It's right there in the text. You know, I don't think it's surprising given what this last year has taught us. I guess as I reflect, it's not surprising that a tall white guy from the Midwest, upper middle class, could hear a story about death and about agony and about despair in the valley of the dry bones and find myself somehow safely separate from it all. That's what privilege does, right? It allows us to see ourselves as somehow distant from the real realities of our world. And so racism, that's a problem that's, that's really an issue in the cities, but not here in northwestern Minnesota. After all, we're 96% white. How much of a problem can it be? And poverty, well, it's, it's pretty easy to overlook that and to just not see it. As a veteran, I'm aware that, uh, I'm always aware that we've been at war for 20 years now, but I notice that many of my neighbors are able to go about their lives uh, not even conscious of that reality. Privilege allows us to do what I did 
with this story from Ezekiel and imagine ourselves safely separate from it all. But that's not how it is in this story. Ezekiel is in there in the valley of dry bones. He's sort of like Hamlet in Act 5, right? Where Hamlet is in the graveyard and he comes across the bones of an old court jester. I can just imagine Ezekiel. Alas, poor Habakkuk. I knew him well. Hmm. Ezekiel was not safely separate from the spiritual and emotional and moral devastation of his age and siblings in Christ. Neither are we. So I get a call from a call committee chair. She's in tears. She's just learned that her congregation will not consider a particular candidate because he happens to be black. And she's realizing that those issues that she thought were over there are right here. And she's in there. Or a pastor shares with me through disbelieving eyes that he finds himself caught up in a struggle that he never imagined was possible. He would see his colleagues get, get themselves into trouble with their congregations in different ways, and he always thought he could somehow ride safely above that. But now he finds himself in this morass of conflict and confusion and anger, and he's realizing that he's in there. Or the family that did everything right. And... They stayed at home and they wore their masks and they stayed, they kept their distance and they washed their hands. But grandpa still got COVID-19 and he's in the hospital and they just don't know how it will go. Or the mom who was, she was so proud of the fact that she had done so well teaching her kids how to make good choices, how to understand right from wrong, how to be successful in this world. But now the knock at the door and the phone ringing off the hook is the school calling about her troubled child. What was it in this last year or in your life that caused the scales to fall from your, your eyes that caused you to see that like Ezekiel, you are right down in there in the valley of the dry bones? Well, beloved in Christ, whatever it was, I want to affirm a truth, which is that the place where you are, in there, in the valley of the dry bones, is exactly the place where God dwells as well. Think about it. Our story with God begins with God in there, right? Down there in the stuff of the earth with his, with his hands up to his elbows in the muck and forming out of the clay a human being and breathing into that being the breath of life. Then along one distant day came Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, who didn't hold himself safely separate from the realities of this world, but waded down into the sin and the morass of our lives and was in there and found among us. The irony is that when we do that thing, where we try to keep ourselves safely separate from it all, we also end up holding our hand out and keeping God at arm's length as well. Because it turns out that it's, it's in there, in the valley of the dry bones, where God whispers in the ears of the prophets. It's in the valley of the dry bones of our lives, where we have seen Jesus walk and heard him speak among us. It's in the valley of the dry bones where the Spirit of God comes from the four winds and breathes new life into the people of God. It's where it happens. And that's why we want to be a church that's in there. Because in there is where God speaks and where the Spirit of God blows. 
And so we're in there with our native neighbors at our native neighbors table as we, we come together and we hear each other's stories and we try to address historical trauma and figure out how can we be in there together with the current realities that we're walking through. And so we're in there with Table of Mercy, a new congregation that, that we are partnering with Bethesda and, and with our partners across the ELCA and in the Moorhead area, a new congregation among people struggling with homelessness. Not from above, but within and among a congregation of people who are struggling with homelessness. And so we're in there with congregations that are beginning to first imagine for the first time that they might call a candidate who happens to be from the LGBTQ plus community with our accompaniment team accompanying them as they consider that, God's discern, as they can discern God's call. Or with practicing resurrection, our, our process for congregations to imagine a new future, small membership congregations, hearing the word of God coming to them in a new way and imagining how they can be in there in their communities of faith and allowing the spirit of God to blow in a new way in their midst. Siblings in Christ, I want to see what happens. I want to see what God does with these dry bones. When every single one of us and every single one of our congregations across northwestern Minnesota is asking this question. Not how can we stay safely above it all, but how can we be in there? How can we be down in there with our, with our hands in up to our elbows in the real hopes and hurts of our community? How can we be in there in the valley of dry bones in our particular place with our particular needs for justice and peace in our own communities? How can we be in there listening for the voices of the prophets who are often the very people that are there in the valley of the dry bones in our communities? How can we be in there with the good news of Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead on our lips? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And I can already hear, I can already hear the, that breath of God coming from the four winds, right? Blowing across our congregations and our people and our communities. I can already hear the bones starting to rattle as they come back together. I can already feel the breath of God as it breathes new life into each one of us and into our congregations and communities all across our northwestern Minnesota Synod. God's peace be with you. Amen.
with the law and the land. And when they were blinded with idols and lies, then you spoke through your prophets to open their eyes. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, go through the wilderness, calling and free. Wind, wind on the sea. You sang in a stable. You cried from a hill. Then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still. the captives dream dreams our women see visions our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions your people arise spirit spirit of gentleness flow through the wilderness calling and free as God's people and pray. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Ever living and ever loving God, we praise you for your loving presence with us. Come, Holy Spirit, take and transform our societies that broken people find healing, that lonely people find love, that bitter people find peace, and that fearful people find hope. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Come, Holy Spirit. Take our world's leaders and governments and bring renewal. That communication can be open. That relationships between hostile people and hostile nations will evaporate. That a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Lord, in your mercy, Spirit. 
Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Come, Holy Spirit, fill your church that our worship will ever be more pleasing to you, that prayers will change our minds instead of trying to get you to change yours, that our lives will make a real difference to real people in the real world. Lord, in your mercy. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. To the glory of your name, Amen. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Let's continue now with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction during this week. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and of the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. Our worship sends us out. Let our service begin. Thanks be to God. a difference. I want my life to make a change. I want my life to do some good here. I want my life to make a change. Working side by side, no out or inside. 
Together we can make that change With a few or many, with a lot or not any Together we can make that change I want my life to make a difference I want my life to make a change I want my life to do some good here I want my life to make a change God is calling us to rise, listen to our sisters' cries. Together we can make that change. Christ is calling us to serve, both in deeds and in our words. Together we can make that change. I want my life to make a difference. I want my life to make a change. I want my life to do some good here. I want my life to make a change On the floodplains of Nepal Where all the waters rise and fall We walk hand in hand with all We are the change On the Indian River Basin With the challenges that they're facing We join in grief and celebration You're the change I want my life to make a difference I want my life to make a change I want my life to do some good here I want my life to make a change